In today's episode, we open our Bibles to the book of Joshua, chapter 18. Seven Israelite tribes still anxiously await their allotted portions of the promised land. In this chapter, Joshua summons their leaders and commands them to traverse the unconquered territories, measuring every hill and valley. And so, armed with surveying to- tools, the men meticulously map the regions. They determine the bounty and potential of each area. And then after their quest was complete, they returned to Joshua at Shiloh, and the time had come to cast lots to decide each tribe's portion in the promised land. Good morning and blessed Pentecost. Today is Tuesday, October 10th, and you're listening to Thy Strong Word, where each weekday morning we explore the holy scriptures to which God bespeaks us righteous and nourishes our faith. I'm your host, Pastor Phil Boo of St. John Lutheran Church in Laverne, Minnesota. Thy Strong Word is brought to you in part by the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. You can learn more about their translating and publishing work on their website at lhfmissions.org. Well, my guest this morning is a regular to the show and also a uh, regular on KFUO. He's the host, uh, co-host of Wrestling with the Basics on Saturdays. It is the Reverend John Lukomsky. He's also a pastor emeritus and a very welcome guest as we head into this section of Joshua. Good morning, brother. How are you doing? I, I'm doing. I'm doing really good, Phil. Uh, I, 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 Pastor Boo, and and um, you know you got some medical issues going on, so I think people need to know you're playing hurt here. So you you are quite the champion here <laughs> <laughs> of the radio ministry, because <laughs> well, a lesser man would say, "Oh, oh no, I'm I'm not going to do this." <laughs> he said, "People usually know it right now. He's suppressing tremendous pain." <laughs> well, I appreciate you. You know, it's like I say on Sundays. You know, they just want an hour. The folks want an hour from you. Yeah. You know, I could give them an hour, even when you're not feeling great. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to give the folks at home an hour, and you too. But you know what? I'm also grateful that if I am struggling with a little bit of pain, that uh, that uh, I have you on the show with me because you know you you got your own show, and I think we and I, you and I, do a pretty good job of uh, of chatting stuff up. So this section today is starting to get into, you know, a section of Joshua that's kind of a slog. I'm going to be honest. Lots of (laughs) names, lots of places. I'm not going to pronounce any of them properly, probably. But the, the, the fact is, though, the Holy Spirit has still seen fit for this information to be passed down to us. And I think it was very important to the people of the Old Testament. It remains important today, but probably in different ways. But we're going to talk about all of that uh, I say there's nothing to do but to do it, so would you start our time off together in prayer, please? Sure. Uh, oh Lord, we, we uh, especially pray for the help of your Holy Spirit t- today, because there are these portions of Scripture where we read them and we think, well, yeah, that might have been important to the people there that were dividing up the land. I guess it was crucially important for them, but it doesn't seem like it makes much difference to us. But 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 help us to, to remember that in these texts, we're trying to learn about what people are like. That means we're going to learn what we're like. But more importantly, we're going to learn what you're like, because you do not change. And so help us in these words to see that you are a God who always, always keeps your promises, even when we might be kind of reluctant to receive those promises. So in Jesus' name, strengthen our faith and our love for one another. Uh, amen. And isn't that true? And, and you know what? That really is the over arching message of, well, actually the whole Bible, but even Joshua, and especially this part, is that God is a God who keeps his promises. But God is also one who keeps his promises in his own way. I mean, we might look at the the lots that they're casting to divide up the land. We might look at the process that God is using and say, well, you know, I, I just think I would have done it differently. But how often does God call us to trust the process and of course, when we do, things work out. So, so here's the, here's the thing. That that's one of the things we can learn from this. Man, man, the process is really, really smart. I I don't know how good we are at drawing principles out, but but man, there's some really, really smart things that God does here in terms of dividing up this land that we maybe we, we could learn from that. That the other thing though, I want to mention. You, you talked about uh, that they were anxious. They're anxious. And, and see, that's that. Well, maybe we should wait until we read the text. But see, that's kind of the puzzle. God has given them the land. And yet we get the impression in this chapter that they've been hesitant to take the land. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm, I'm eager to talk to you about that, why that why that might be. 
because uh, my goodness, we've been waiting for 40 years to get the promised land. Why, why would there be some reluctance here? But anyway, where, where do you want to go from here? Pastor well, Boone? let's see here. Last time we were together, we saw how the land west of the Jordan was divided up. I'm um, pardon me. Uh, east of the, no, oh, yeah, west of the Jordan. Oh, gosh, I'm, I'm already kind of uh, he's, mixed he's up. He's on drugs, people. <laughs> Give him a break. <laughs> yeah, got my pain meds, yeah. But today we're going to see how the land on the east side is allocated. That's what I was trying to say. And so um, when uh, we ended chapter 17, it was with these words. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, even though they have chariots of iron, and even though they are strong. So now he's talking at that point, to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh. But yep. I think that's going to be part of the background of what we're going to look at is, yes, they've been given this land, but the reticence in taking it, the anxiety that you're looking forward to us talking about, that that is because they have to fight for it. And I think that's that's a little antithetical to our understanding of kind of we, we think of what well, God gifts us with faith and forgiveness and salvation. We inherit freely the the new promised land of the new heavens and new earth that Christ will usher in. But at this point, God's saying, I'm giving it to you. Now go get it. Go claim it. <laughs> and if I were one of those floppy Bible preachers walking around in a five thousand dollar suit, I might turn this into a name it and claim it kind of thing. And that's not what's going on. But but you can see where people might be confused. And even them, as they look out and say, well, gosh, Lord, if this is mine, just let me have it. And God says, well, no, <laughs> you have to exercise my judgment against the current inhabitants. So I, I think that's where some of that's coming from. Um, do you want to just maybe read the first section? Because um, I, I think we, we don't have a ton of verses, even though we have a lot to talk about. I think I'm just going to read 18, oh, one until it makes sense to stop. Okay. Uh, right. In fact, oh, if, 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 I would suggest stop at, stop at verse 3, and then we can kind of get the whole foundation set, and then, then we can get into the details of how they're going to do all this division. Perfect. Would that be all right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Verse 18, starting with chapter 18, verse 1. Then the whole congregation of the people of Israel assembled at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The land lay subdued before them. But there remained among the people of Israel seven tribes whose inheritance had not yet been apportioned. So Joshua said to the people of Israel, etc. So that's getting into 2-3. So we have Joshua saying to the people, how long are you going to put off taking possession of the land? That's where we're at. Uh, take it from there. Okay, uh, well, uh, since we're, we've been dealing with that, let's let's start with that. Uh, and again, Pastor Boo, thank you for reminding me that it, I really need to read the context. <laughs> you, you think after 40 years of ministry, I, I would know that context is important. Because honestly, I was reading this and thinking, well, <clears throat> you've defeated the Canaanites. Why aren't you just going and taking the land? But, but as you pointed out <laughs> from the previous verse that I hadn't read, <clears throat> that yeah... <clears throat> They've been defeated. The land has been subdued in one sense, but there's always the mop-up operations, isn't there? That that's what you learn in war. That even even when you maybe have won the war, you still got to go in and take over these individual communities, these individual areas, and and there's still people there, just like back in World War II. You know, they're, they're probably Japanese in the Philippines that don't know the war is over, and they're going to be fighting tooth and nail, <laughs> and, and and you're not going to be able to say, hey hey, the war's over, you already surrendered. <laughs> that, that that's not going to fly. Uh, so yeah, you're you're, you're right that, that, that this is still a challenge. This is not going to be easy. Uh, I, I'm thinking of Paul who said, "Work out your salvation with fear and trembling." Uh, it, it's all done for us, uh, Pastor Boo. It's salvation is ours. It's our gift in Jesus Christ. But but as you yourself are experiencing, that doesn't make it easy. We, we still got all kinds of pains and struggles in this life, uh, uh, and and. and so we don't know how those are going to be resolved, you know. In fact, they might not be written. For me, at least, the pains I was struggling with, they won't be resolved until I die, and I'm not really looking for that solution. Right. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, so thank you for pointing that out. That, that no, And that's how it is. That's how it is for us. We have it all. Uh, the, the salvation, eternal life, heaven, it's all promised to us. It's guaranteed. There's not a thing we need to do for that to be accomplished. 
but it's not like it's going to be easy between now and then. There's going to be constant struggles with our own health, with the, the, the needs of our, our family, our loved ones and stuff. And, and so don't be surprised by that, I guess. That's that. and, and, and I guess the, the question that, that uh, God would ask us, well, why do you keep putting off taking all these things that I've given you? Um, so so that, that would be one thing. I don't Because the other thing we need to talk about, the tent of meeting, but anything more that we should talk about this whole business about putting off receiving the blessing. Well, you know, you it's interesting. You brought up something just now. Um, you brought up the story, inadvertently, of Lieutenant uh, uh, Hiro Onoro, ah. who was one of those Japanese resistance fighters who for something like 20 years was still fighting the battle. Fascinating story, folks, if you don't know about him. Go search YouTube or something, find out. Very great. But yet that really is true. There are people still there. There is rebuilding to do. You know, they didn't destroy all the cities because they plan on living in some of them. They only destroyed a few. Um, and, and then, of course, this allotment, it still requires them to do something. And how often do we think of our faith as something that, well, because it's a gift, because God just, you know, bestows it upon us, well, then we just sit back and wait for him to come back. But that's not the task he's given us. Talking about the process, you know, the fields are white for harvesting and 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 there's work to do. And yeah, we don't do those things. See, they're not going in to earn the right to inherit the land. They're just going in to take possession of it. And yeah, it's going to take some work. But the land itself has been given to them. In the same way, and you, you brought up that beautiful word of from St. Paul, you know, yeah, we work out our faith with fear and trembling. It, it, it takes effort. You're given the faith, but not given it to just lie fallow so that the, the land rots, but rather so that you can go in, you can cultivate it, you can bring other people in too. So yeah, there's, I, I think even from the get-go, we already see here where, wow, this section about them taking the land actually applies to us today. Well, and, and that's the thing we need to remember, that even though salvation is a free gift, and we don't need to do anything for salvation, as you pointed out, that doesn't mean as safe people we don't have stuff to do. Uh, uh, right now, every one of us have people that we need to love and we need to care for, and, and uh, sometimes that's easy, sometimes that's simple, but more often than not, it's quite a challenge. I, I've got, I've got two, two children who both have uh, uh, um, uh, neurological diseases, progressive neurological diseases, uh, and it, it's a constant challenge to me. What what can I do? How can I help them? Uh, and it's a frustrating challenge because I know I cannot cure them. That's what I would love to do. That's right. what we pray for. Uh, but so far, we don't have any solution like that. But see, I can complain. I can whine about that. And, and I do. <laughs> but but no the point is is that that's what god wants me to do we got these people we're supposed to love and care for what what did we think <laughs> when we were called into the kingdom that we would just be sitting around on our couches watching tv no, right. no as you said no this is why this is why he's made us part of his kingdom because there's people that he needs us to love and care for and we're the people to that's do right. it and, and and the interesting thing is here, here's the thing pastor booth i want to make perfectly clear because I don't want to come off like I'm saying, well, now get out there and start working hard. You know, that's what you need <laughs> right. to do. Just apply yourself. Uh, because I know, no, we, we can't do that. In fact, I think in our struggles and trials, we, we come to the realization that, that it's true we can't do anything. That, that's why we can't earn our salvation because we really, there's, there's, there's a sin in us that would just keep us from doing what we need to do. But that's, that's the other passage that keeps coming to my mind. But Jesus says, you know, you're connected to me. I am the vine. You're the branches. It's true. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But you're mm -hmm. not apart from me. You're in me. And, and you will do a loving, incredibly uh, sacrificial things that you would never have dreamt of in your own mind that you could accomplish. And, and you won't realize that at the time because it'll seem like such a struggle, such a trial, just like these people. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't know that we can go in and take over these cities. But then it'll be done, and you'll look back and say, oh, my my God, we, we did do it. Uh, but we didn't do it because of us. We, we did it because of the Lord who gave them and the Lord who strengthened us and the Lord who helped us to fulfill all of these things. You bring up an extremely good point. You know, when they go in, whether they were, you know, we've taken this shift in Joshua where we moved away from all the battles now to just the appointments. But when they were in the battles, in the midst of taking this land, and even in the work they still have left to do, yes, they have to do it, but they're not left alone. Yahweh fights their battles. Yahweh's the one who provides for him. There's divine providence. So when we say, pastors say, 
uh, or anybody says, the Bible says, go out and, and, and live out your faith with good works. We're not saying do that alone. We're saying that's what the Holy Spirit is equipping you to do, to go out there and be the Christian, be, you know, be the person that he wants you to be. And of course we're going to fail, and that's why he brings us together in community, but it doesn't keep us from going and, and, and striving for that. So, yeah, just, just it's something for us to remember that while there's work for us to do, we are not left alone in our doing, right? The Holy Spirit's with us. It's so important. And, 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 you know, if you think about it, that's been their, their problem all along, is that they have this mindset that this is something that's left on them, and then they despair. Then they despair. In, in fact, <laughs> what tickled me, Pastor Boo, is they're reluctant now to go and take over these individual cities and these individual areas. And, and thank you for pointing out the reason is because there's still enemies living in those areas. <laughs> and 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 but but this was the problem at the beginning, wasn't it? We we forget that at the very beginning God said, here's the promised land. He took them right away to the promised land. He said, here it is. I send out your spies and the spies come back and say, well man, it really is a really, really nice, wow, land of milk and honey. This is everything you could ever want. But of course we can't do it. <laughs> and there's giants there. There's there's fortified cities. There's no way we can conquer this land. Oh, that we had died in the wilderness. And that's then God right. says, well, it wasn't my plan, but if that's what you want. <laughs> so so there's always this kind of, and it comes from the fact we think it's up to us. And, and how can we help people yeah. understand it's never been up to you. It's always been in the hands of the Lord. So to quit worrying about what you can or can't do and just do whatever God has given you to just love people. Like I said, I, I cannot cure my children, but I can still love them. I can be there to help them. Can I? Yeah, I can do that, <laughs> you know. So, so yeah, uh, we, we got God with us. Just do whatever it is we can possibly do. And here's the incredible thing. He'll work it all out somehow. I don't know, but after 70 years, I know he does it. I've seen him do it before. Uh, and yet it seems like whatever challenge comes up, for me, a past through, I think, well, hey, I don't think he can handle that one. That's going to be more for him. <laughs> and the Lord, I think he just shakes his head and laughs at me and says, all right, John, quit quit sitting around. As Just as, as, as Joshua says here, quit sitting around. Come on. Don't put it off anymore. Let's get out there and do what we can do. And what we can do is exactly what these men will do. They, we can look over the land. We can investigate it. We'll lay it out. We'll, we'll get ready to divide this up as God has promised it would be divided up. So let's talk a little bit about where they're at. So even in verse 1, the whole congregation of the people of Israel assembled at Shiloh. Uh, so Shiloh, and they set up a tent of meeting there because the land lay subdued before them. So in, in this part, they're able to set up their tent of meeting. Um, this is where they're going to, I guess, <laughs> to do the allotment of things. But uh, what is Shiloh to the people? Where is that? Okay, uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take just a little curve here, and then we'll get back to Shiloh if you don't mind. Yeah, sounds I, good. Because I just just wanted to point out, I think what's striking here, and you you've been doing you've been doing Joshua for for uh, weeks probably. Uh, this is the first time that the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, was even brought up, which yep. that that should be striking because that's a key thing, right? That's the center. That's where they go to do their worship, just like we go to church, and yet it doesn't get a mention until here. Uh, and, and what's really cool, because I didn't read before, which I probably should have, but I did read ahead a little bit. Uh, and it's interesting that when we get through this section, the tent of meeting shows up again, uh, and it will show up today in, in the middle of this. So it's kind of like a reminder that the focus of everything, if you're, if you're encountering a problem that you don't know what to do with, Maybe you need to begin by going to where God's at. That might be a good place to start. Go, go to, because that's the business of the tent of meeting. That's that's what's cool, is this is where they knew God would would dwell here on earth. Uh, God obviously dwells everywhere. He's God, but we need to have one place where we can know that He is just there for sure, uh, and, and we can come and have no doubts or questions about whether He's there. Um, so I did want to emphasize that the tent of meeting is just a central focus. Uh, and, and I also want to pick up on what you said earlier, because uh, you, you mentioned this is why we go to church, people. We, we don't go yep. to church because that's a work for us to do. Uh, we go to church because we know that God is present there in a way that he isn't present anywhere else in the world. I, I'm sorry, you will not find the clear words of mercy and grace and the promise that you mentioned that he is with us uh, in all things. 
I, I, you won't find that. I, I'm sorry, that's not on the golf course. It's not in the hospital. Uh, it can be, I guess, if the word of God is brought to those places. But I, I see few golfers that are actually studying their Bible. That's There's right. an idea for you, Pastor. Why don't you have Bible study on the golf course? Well, yeah, that's, but yeah, <laughs> that's for another show. I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. I was going to say because you know I was I've I've done some golfing and I'm thinking yeah I guess you're not really spending a lot. In fact, the way I golf usually I, there's room for repentance at the end. So <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Well, well, I was thinking there's probably a lot of prayers going on. In well, golf, yeah, but, that's true. But not the things true. we're looking for. No. But you know, um, the major fighting is over, as yeah. you've already pointed out, and so I guess there's a comfort level there where now they can set up their tent of meeting. Uh, again, still work to be done, but they be they're beginning their work in the Lord. I think that's also something we see. Yeah. Not that the Lord wasn't fighting for them, of course he was, but now it's like, it's almost like creation, and I don't want to draw this connection too much, but there's work on the, the six days of creation during the hexameron, and then on the seventh day, you know, we rest. Well, here, uh, proverbially, they have finished their fighting now they're resting in the Lord, preparing to receive the benefits of what God has done for them. Um, and and I, I definitely think there's a connection there. Well, yeah, and, and, and thank you for pointing that out. Uh, that's what Shiloh means, right? It does mean rest. Right. It does mean rest. Uh, uh, and now, now you got me thinking, so that's kind of an interesting picture, isn't it? So we've had this great battle, and, and it's been difficult, and we, we've had failures. Uh, the failures, of course, have been because we didn't trust in God. We tried to do things on our own. But, but as, as always happens, the Word of God has been fulfilled. The land is now subdued. We, we have a time of rest. But then again, we got to get up and go back to work. <laughs> okay? Uh, so at this point in time, at least, rest is not a thing that is to be eternal. It is a thing we need. We need with regularity so we can be reminded, have our faith strengthened, because we can't do no good thing on our own, like Jesus says. So we got to reconnect with the vine and everything there. But I hadn't thought about that. So that that's the pattern. You're right. We have Shiloh. We have rest. We've got our tent of meeting set up. We've gone. We've worshiped our Lord. And now God says, okay, guys, there's right. stuff to do. So get out there and do that. But again, what I love about this, Pastor Boo, is we're not doing it so we can get God to love us. Right. We're doing it because we know he loves us. That's why we can go out and do it, because we know it's all going to be okay. We just have the, the things we need to do that he's given us to do. Well, and no one takes a rest so that then they never have to do anything again. You rest so that you can recoup and be ready to go out. I mean, even our rest where we receive the uh, the Sabbath rest that comes from Christ's salvation, the, what we receive in his word and sacrament on Sundays, that is for us to then be prepared to go out and live our Christian lives. So here we see in verse 3, Joshua said to the people of Israel, How long will you put off going in to take possession of the land which Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has given you? So while there probably is some, you know, still some Lieutenant Nodos out there, and there's still some probably a little bit of fighting to do and some rebuilding, and I think that's where all the work comes from, I also get the sense that they're not even going out to do the surveying. There, there's just a <laughs> sense that... It's just kind of like, well, you know, we, I don't know. Have you ever been so tired, brother, where yeah. you know that if you sit down, you're not getting back up again for a long time? Yeah. And, and yeah. that's the sense I get. They're like, well, you know, we, we kind of like the rest. You know, we've been fighting and we've gotten the, isn't it enough that we've just, we've beat, we've beat them and we've conquered them with the Lord's help. And now we just kind of want to rest. We just, we just want to live in the house. That's another analogy I can use. Um, I, I've moved a couple of times. I'm sure you have too, as a function of my uh, vocation. And you pack up all the stuff. You get all the boxes to the place. You you move it in, maybe with the help of some folks. And now all the boxes are in, and there's still work to be done. You got to unload the boxes. But you really just want to sit down and rest. You just want to be there. You just want to be living in your house. But nope, there's still work to be done. I think that's might be even a better analogy for this. Yeah, and, and I I'd agree with you, and and I, and I think it's interesting that his motivation for doing this to to, to quit just laying around and let's get this done, is that uh, the, the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you. So he's calling them to to remember everything that's happened in the past. Uh, if there is any kind of reluctance in them because uh, uh, they're tired and because they're thinking, well, 
You know what? They're probably like me, Pastor Boo. When everything goes right, I just know something's going to go wrong. <laughs> I, I, I'm what they call a dark Lutheran. I, I, you can't, I can't be happy because when everything is solved, when God does answer my prayers, then if they, oh, well, what's going to happen tomorrow now? Something bad's going to happen. I know it is. And so maybe that's, if we're tired. Let's just sit here. At least we don't have any problems at this point because who knows what it's going to be when we start going out in the land and surveying it. Uh, um, well, you say you say a dark Lutheran. I thought that was sort of your standard issue Lutheran because my, <laughs> my my wife and I, every time things are going really well, or let's say we have a small little windfall, we yeah. go, okay, the Lord is preparing us to get through something that's coming. <laughs> and I don't want to be pessimistic, just realistic. You know, yeah. you you look at that and you go, we know the Lord prepares us for when we have troubles, and so. I think trouble might be on the horizon. <laughs> and, 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 of course, the comfort is look, look, look back at your history because right. this has been the pattern. You have been reluctant. You have failed. And what has God done in every instance? God has been faithful. So now this is what he promised you. Because, <laughs> see, that's the danger. You were talking about the, the, the guys in the 5,000 suits, uh, $5,000 suits. Uh, um the only thing you can be sure of is what God's told you he's going to do. And, and God has not promised you you're going to be rich. I'm sorry. In fact, I can remember some pretty key passages where he said, we'll probably have to wrestle with poverty. That seemed yeah. to be more the pattern that we're going to be rich and famous and powerful. In fact, I, we just did a bunch of passages from Jesus, didn't it? There, Jesus said, you, you, it's the little ones. That's the ones that are going to get God's blessings, not the mighty, the rich, the strong. Well, well whatever. But see, that's a, there, there's no doubt here. He said, this is your land. We're just figuring out where to draw the boundaries. So what are you sitting around for? There's no question about what God's going to do. It's just like us. We're going to have heaven. There's no question about that. That's what he said. So now start doing the things here on earth that needs to be done in the meantime. And don't worry about that because that's a done deal just like this. This is a done deal. This land is yours. So get out there and start start uh, uh, doing the survey. Now, of course, as they are humans, there is that propensity to be envious of, you know, well, I want this land. I hope I get this part. Or, oh, man, I'd be really upset if I didn't get this. And I think that's going to come to play, too. But right now, I think it's actually a, a good time for us to pause. We uh, have to take a break. But folks, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we will keep on going with my guest, Pastor Lukomsky. See you on the other side. These are the voices of young Lutherans in Mexico City, children who are excited to learn more about their Savior, Jesus. But they need our help, because good Lutheran books for kids in the Spanish language are in short supply in Mexico. To learn how you can help tell Spanish-speaking kids everywhere about Jesus in a language they can understand, go to the Lutheran Heritage Foundation website at lhfmissions.org forward slash Juan 316. Welcome back to Thy Strong Word. I'm your host, Pastor Phil Boo, and with me is the Reverend John Lukomsky, Pastor Emeritus and co-host of Wrestling with the Basics on KFUO and a frequent guest of this show, too. Before we get back to the topic, though, I just want to thank you, dear saints at home, for taking the time to be with us in God's Word. Or, you know, if it's in the morning or the evening, doesn't matter to me. I'm just glad you're here. And remember, if you have any questions or comments about today's show, or you want to send a message to my guest, you can reach out to me by email at pastorboo at gmail.com. You can also find me on Facebook if you're so inclined. Well, let's get back to our text. Now, brother, whenever you're ready, I can read the next part. Uh, anything else before we move on? No, no, I think I think we're ready to move on. And, and, and I just want to pick up what you said before. I had not thought about it. But God's dealing with a bunch of sinners here, isn't it? That oh, hasn't yeah. changed. They've been given victory, but they're still the same sinful people they were before the victory. And I think you're right. Everything we have here is God dealing with sinners and being really, really smart about it. Okay. Of course. I'm going to start at verse 3 just for context's sake. Here we go. So Joshua said to the people of Israel, 
How long will you put off going in to take possession of the land which Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has given you? Provide three men from each tribe, and I will send them out that they may set out and go up and down the land. They shall write a description of it with a view to their inheritance, and then come to me. They shall divide it into seven portions. Judah shall continue in his territory on the south, and the house of Joseph shall continue in their territory on the north. And you shall describe the land in seven divisions and bring up the description here to me. And I will cast lots for you here before Yahweh our God. The Levites have no portion among you, for the priesthood of Yahweh is their inheritance. And Gad and Reuben and, Reuben and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond the Jordan eastward, which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, gave them. So the men arose and went, and Joshua charged those who went to write the descriptions of the land, saying, Go up and down in the land and write a description and return to me, and I will cast lots for you here before Yahweh and Shiloh. So the men went and passed up and down in the land and wrote in a book a description of it by towns and seven divisions. Then they came to Joshua in the camp at Shiloh, and Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before Yahweh, and there Joshua appointed the land to the people of Israel to each his portion. All right, so that's going to be the end of verse 10. Now, just for the folks at home, the next several episodes, um, including today's episode, which will cover the inheritance for Benjamin, but following that, we're pretty much going to go tribe by tribe and describe the different inheritances until we get to chapter 20 and we talk about the cities of refuge and where the, the Levites will live. But for now, we are uh, just here on the cusp of it. He's saying, listen, the land is conquered. There's a lot of work to do. But all I'm wanting you to do right now is go and survey it. Why wait? Go and take what's yours. Isn't it interesting that, as you said, they're sinners. But boy, we can relate to this. I mean, how many gifts has God given us? And he just says, I'm not going to force anything on you. Go, take, right? Take and eat. This is yours. And, and and yet, if if I'm one of the the, the surveyors, I, I can say, well, yeah, that that's uh, okay for you to say, Joshua. But you know, there, there's going to be 21 of us where we're going to go out here into this this foreign country where there are still people there that they don't really love us, <laughs> you know. And, and now we're not coming with an armed force. You know, it's not like we got soldiers with us. We're just and and don't you think they're going to kind of figure, what are you guys doing? What do what are you checking all this out for? Oh, wait a second, are you preparing to divide this land up for you? You know, it does seem like kind of a dangerous thing that maybe we'd be doing. So, yeah, I, I, the more we talk about this, Pastor Bill, the more I realize, yeah, there there is definitely a reason to kind of be reluctant. But but again, I just noticed, too, how, how it keeps emphasizing, all right, all these other, these tribes have already been given their portion. God has done that. Why don't you think he can do this for you and your tribes now, too? Of course, there's always challenges. No one's saying it's going to be easy, but but just know the Lord's going to do it. The Lord's going to do what he says he's going to do. And, and they and they do. They follow through, isn't it? I, I don't think we realize what an amazing act of faith it is on their part to go ahead and go out and walk through all these lands and do the descriptions and, 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 and lay out the divisions. And then even to the specifics of the cities that we're going to have uh, in Benjamin, which that's where it really gets tricky because now you've got congregations of people who are your enemies. And again, you're just a handful of people checking all this out. Uh, and I think probably they were smart enough to not to go marching into the town and say, oh, we're coming <laughs> here to divide all this up for us. <laughs> they were probably cleverer than that. But yeah, it, it's always a challenge. And it just that's the way it is for us. No one's saying it's easy to be a Christian. And I think we can illustrate it here. Uh, the thing, though, that tickles me is how God's going to divide this all up because they're Christians or, or believers, let's say that. Uh, but they're also sinful believers. And and, and so, hey, uh, Pastor Boo, I, I, I've been to your your part of Minnesota. I, I like that. I want that to be my town. <laughs> I, want, I want your church. <laughs> you can have my my church back there in Southern Illinois. And, and so, you know what I'm saying? There's going to be all this yeah. competitiveness. But what a, what a great way to resolve this, huh? By having representatives from each group. All right, so everybody's got their representative there. Everybody gets to see the land. We're all going to divide it up together. And, and guess what? 
Who gets what's all going to be decided by chance? <laughs> well, he does say, too. He says, I'm trying to find it here, because he says in this very section that we read. All right. Sorry, I lost it. Here we go. He says, uh, go up and down in the land, write a description, return to me. But he says, do it in um, in view of your inheritance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That that part is kind of, I guess, stands out as being strange to me. Uh, yeah, here it is, verse 4. They shall write a description of it with a view to their inheritances. It, it almost sounds like he's saying, you know, your inheritance is go divide it up, but they're going to come back with opinions. They're going to come back with just what you said. Hey, I, I saw some good land. I hope we get that one, or that's that would be perfect for us, just so you know. But he, he also tells them right away, but... Even no matter what you say when you come back, Yahweh gets to decide. Right? Yeah. Yahweh yeah. gets to decide. Uh, I, I'm reminded of the old thing that you did with kids. You know, if it was dividing up a piece of cake, all right, you get to slice it, and the other person gets to choose uh, which slice he yes. gets, because you kind of got a little bit of that going on here. Uh, but I want to go back to that word inheritance, uh, because man, that is such an important word throughout the Bible. Uh, in fact, uh, we, we just got done doing the parable. Did you do the parable about the the workers in the vineyard and when the sun came? And, and, oh, yeah, that's what uh, I preached on, yeah. Uh, because if I remember correctly, I think that, yeah, well, that's that's the evil. That's the wickedness. They say, let's kill the sun. He's the heir. And then we can take the inheritance. And and uh, I'd never thought about it before this year. Wow, that's a powerful word if you're, if you're a Jew. Listen to that. Because your whole history in Judaism is about inheritance. That, that's the whole thing, that from the very beginning, God said, I have an inheritance for you, a land uh, that you're going to get, not because you work for it. So you don't work for an inheritance. Uh, the only reason you get an inheritance is because you have a relationship, right? You're in the family. Uh, that, that's how it works. Uh, and, and so I, I, I'm, I'm glad that word came up because I forgot to, to put that down in my notes. Because, see, that, that forms the whole thing of what's going on here. Everything you're going to get, it's not going to be because of your work. Oh, there's work for you to do. Everybody in the family has work to do. Somebody's got to do the dishes. Somebody's got to, you know, sweep the floor and everything. But 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 the blessings will come because you're part of the family, and 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 therefore this is going to belong to you at some point. Uh, of course, as Christians, the thing that always struck me about the word inheritance, uh, and by the way, it is what it says at the final judgment, right? Matthew, receive the inheritance prepared for you before the foundation of the world. So we're talking about us here, our inheritance. But anyway, the one thing that has to happen to get an inheritance is somebody's got to die. And, and then as Christians, we think, oh, oh, yeah, that is what happened. Yeah, Jesus died. And, and now the inheritance is ours, see. Uh, and it doesn't come because you work for it. It just comes because you happen to be part of a family, and, and uh, someone died, and then that inheritance was given you. So anyway, thank you for bringing up the word inheritance. I, 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 whenever I see that in the Bible, they go, oh, that's such a great, because that's us. That's what we're going to get. We're going to get an inheritance, because we are sons of the Heavenly Father, and, and our brother died for us, you know, gave his life as a ransom. So, uh, well, well anyway. And as we look at them dividing up this land, though, boy, isn't it poignant in its timing that we're discussing it today, because even though the Israel that exists today, the nation state of Israel, is absolutely not the same Israel as we're discussing here, yeah. they still occupy the same land, and they occupy that same land with uh, Muslims now. And, of course, forever they have been fighting over this land, and in recent events they're near the edge of all, you know, all full-out war again. Um, and... Although most of the people in Israel now are secular, so this isn't exactly the uh, the same people, right? Right. The Israel, of course, becomes uh, Jesus gets all of Israel reduced to him, and then now all who have faith in him are Israel. But still, we see how important that concept of inheritance is, even from mostly secular people today. They're continuing to fight over this land. And and uh, Pastor Boo, I'm glad you brought that up because see. Isn't that what lies at the foundation of so much of the problems we have in our world today? So now they're fighting over the land there in Israel, and they've been fighting over the land there in the Ukraine. And I'm thinking that, that when, when Jesus came again, that's what was on the mind of the people. Oh, now we've got a Messiah, and he's going to get no. the land back for us and drive out the, the Romans and everything. 
and, and and of course, in all of this, I think God is trying to say to the Jews and to us, it never was about the land. Right. I, 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 you're going to get the land because I said you're going to get the land, but you're not going to have the land forever. That's not an eternal blessing. No one ever said that's what, no, I had a better land for you. Isn't that what Hebrews say? There's something in Hebrews. I can't remember right off the passage, but yeah, we've, we've got a better city, see? Uh, and yet we still have that problem that we get so wrapped up in the worldly, earthly things that we forget. You know, in, in the end, it's about, it's about a different kind of inheritance. Uh, and, and I think we would do better at dealing with the worldly, earthly things if we knew that. I think a lot of our problems, too, is we get so wrapped up in here and now and the physical and the earthly. Uh, now, I'll admit, Pastor Boo, I guess there's the danger that we could get so wrapped up in the pie in the sky, by and by, as they say, that we forget, oh, gosh, we've got all kinds of things we need to do here and now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the inheritance always was something more than just a piece of land here on earth. The inheritance that God offered these people is the same inheritance he's offered us because there's only one church, and that is that is eternity, that's salvation, heaven, uh, whatever word you want to use. Well, in the same way that the sacrificial system pointed forward to Jesus and the Passover points forward to Jesus, the inheritance of the promised land points forward to that greater promised land, new heavens and new earth, which are, of course, to come. The, the section that you're talking about from Hebrews, I did a quick Google, and uh, we find that, of course, in Hebrews chapter 11. And starting with verse 13, he says, These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, talking about some of the people who died on the way to the promised land. He says, But having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth, for the people who speak thus make it clear that they're seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had gone out, they would have had an opportunity to return. And here's the key verse. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. And so, therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Now, that's in the context of talking about Abraham and faith and assurance and inheritances. But it really brings up the point is that the things on earth are not worth fighting over in the sense that we have to earn them because even this land thing, it's very important in the moment, but I'm afraid. I'm just afraid that there are good, faithful Christians out there that are going to conflate the Israel that they actually are with the Israel of the nation state and and make connections that aren't there. No, the reason they're fighting is because they did not realize that the Messiah had come and that the true inheritance was in heaven. And the new heavens and new earth. And isn't it crazy that that's still going on today? Wouldn't you think after everything that took place, we would understand? Uh, that? Uh, thank you for that Hebrews passage. That, isn't that just a beautiful passage, too? And, and, and what I like about that passage is it's a reminder that we haven't got it either. See, when we have problems and trials, I, I don't know, you're dealing with some physical issues, and seriously, we pray for and bless that they'll get that resolved and, and help solve that for you quickly. But, but, of course, it's no, no surprise because you haven't got it yet. None of us have got it yet, but we're going to. We're going to. And, and then all of these things, we'll see them for what they are. They really weren't all that important at all, although not to deny that they're really, really important to us now. Uh, for those who are physically ill at this point, yeah, that, that is a major, crucial thing. But just remember, it's not the final. It's not the last thing. Right. Um, and, and for those of us who are around people that have those kind of struggles— it's a clear call for us to just love and care for them, support them. Well, we, we always yeah. want to cling to St. Paul's words that say, you know, I, I connect my sufferings to the sufferings of Christ. Yeah. But, but to paraphrase St. Augustine, who, who allegedly said, uh, prayed for, ch- Lord, give me chastity, but not yet. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will paraphrase that to say, I'm happy to share in the sufferings of Christ, but... Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. That's our sinful nature, right? We want we want perfect health. We want perfect wealth. We want the land without having to go in and survey it. We want the faith without having to go out and tell people about it. Um, and 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 of course, God, not because He's not eager to just give us these things, but just like a good parent and a child, our heavenly Father knows that we have to have skin in the game, not in the sense that we're earning our salvation. Yeah. I, I feel like I have to keep giving that disclaimer. I'm not saying that. But but good works are required of the Christian. Going out and doing what you need to do, which sometimes results in suffering, um, is, is, is your job as a Christian. And so for these people, 
Joshua's laying on the line. You need to go out and you need to do this. You need to you need to not <laughs> you need to take the descriptions, bring them back, and Yahweh, our Lord, our God, our Savior, who's brought us thus far, he's going to be fair to you. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and and so now we're brought back to that that I will cast lots for you here before the Lord, and there's the word Shiloh again, in, in rest. Uh, so it's a beautiful promise. You, you're going to go out, you're going to do the work. No one's saying it's going to be easy. It will be very difficult. In fact, I, I think sometimes it's actually by design that the work is too hard for us uh, because we have agree. to remember just what you said. No, this isn't something we're going to accomplish. It's impossible for us to accomplish. We, we have to be constantly brought back to the, 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 the tent of meeting, to the tabernacle, back to the Lord. Uh, but in the end, yes, we will receive the inheritance. That's exactly what it's going to do. Uh, we will finally have that rest uh, that the book of Hebrews also talks about. And, and this will all finally be done by the Lord, who will be actually doing the, the division. And, and trust me, you, you want the Lord to be doing the division because we're too sinful. If we started to do the dividing up, we would have what we have today in the world, we will have constant fighting and war. In fact, I suppose we'll have it, even though the Lord is the one dividing it up. But you got to give God credit. This was a great way to do it. Just cast lots, then no one can accuse anyone else of trying to be unfair. It's just how it all ended up. And now we're going to get into the whole thing of Benjamin, and, and the location of Benjamin, again, is a brilliant, it's a brilliant move on the part of God to put Benjamin where he puts Benjamin. But, but that's uh, for the uh, uh, following verses. Well, and it is for our section today, so we might as well go into it. And, and what we're going to cover next, folks, it really is a teaser for what's going to be happening for the next few episodes. But we're going to hear it now as the Lord reveals to us the inheritance for Benjamin, starting with verse 11. The lot of the tribe of the people of Benjamin, according to its clans, came up, and the territory allotted to it fell between the people of Judah and the people of Joseph. On the north side, their boundary began at the Jordan. Then the boundary goes up to the shoulder north of Jericho, then up through the hill country westward, and it ends at the wilderness of beth Aven. From there, the boundary passes along southward in the direction of Luz to the shoulder of Luz, that is Bethel. Then the boundary goes down to Ataroth Adar on the mountain that lies south of lower beth Horon. Then the boundary goes in another direction, turning on the westward side, southward from the mountain that lies to the south, opposite Beth Horon, and it ends at Kiriath Baal, that is, Kiriath Jarim, a city belonging to the people of Judah. This forms the western side. And the southern side begins at the outskirts of Kiriath Jarim, and the boundary goes from there to Ephron, to the springs of the waters of Nephtoah. Then the boundary goes down to the border of the mountain that overlooks the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is at the north end of the valley of Rephaim. And it then goes down to the valley of Hinnom, south of the shoulder of the Jebusites, and downward to Enrogel. Then it bends in a northerly direction, going to En Shemesh, and from there goes to Giliathoth, which is opposite the ascent of Adumim. Then it goes down to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben, and passing on to the north of the shoulder of Beth Arabah, it goes down to the Arabah. Then the boundary passes uh, on to the north of the shoulder of Beth Hogla. And the boundary ends at the northern bay of the Salt Sea, and at the south end of the Jordan. This is the southern border. The Jordan forms its boundary on the eastern side. This is the inheritance of the people of Benjamin according to their clans, boundary by boundary all around. And I'm going to finish up our text today, verses 21 through 28. Now the cities of the tribe of the people of Benjamin according to their clans were Jericho, Beth Hogla, Emek Kezis, Beth Arabah, Zemarim, Bethel, Avavim, Perah, Ophrah, uh, Shephar Amoni, Ophni, Giba, twelve cities with their villages, Gibeon, Ramah, Beeroth, Mizpah, uh, Shephira, Mozah, Mozah, pardon me, Rechem, Irpiel, Teralah, Zelah, Halef, Jabus, that is Jerusalem, Gibeah, and Kiriath-Jerim, fourteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the people of Benjamin according to its clans. <sighs> so, folks at home, I you should... <laughs> 
you should be able to draw a map, I think, from that. And if you can't, you weren't paying attention. No, I'm just kidding. It's it, how foreign are these places? But I think we need to remember that if we were describing our hometown or even our home country, we, you know, I could say, well, you know, North Carolina's uh, uh, west of Tennessee. Actually, no, it's east of Tennessee. Sorry, the east of Tennessee. You know, I could describe maybe uh, the United States in a way, and you would get it. I think it just seems confusing because they're so foreign to us. That's all. Well, and and most of these places don't even exist anymore, although a lot of them do, which I think makes it really interesting to know that you could actually go over and see some of these uh, places from all those those years before. Uh, and, and I always appreciate this, too, because we forget that they don't have the kind of uh, uh, numbering, dating, location systems they had. They didn't have GPSs, you know, and so this is how you have to do things. You have to locate it by the names of places that everyone knows how else you going to indicate where some and and as you said up until a few years ago when we started using gps is that's how we did it well it's you know it's about two miles south of northfield or whatever that's how you gave people locations by whatever you know spots were known um the, the one thing though that i want to point out here that that i think is just so you know god's a smart guy I, i've learned that he, he's he's a pretty bright fella because um, you have these two major tribes, right? You've got Judah and the people of Joseph. Uh, they, they call them here. What in the world was that? Uh, uh, <laughs> um, and these are major. They're, they're big. They're large. They're powerful. And, and so what does God do? Right in between them on their borders, God puts this little group, the, 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 the nation of, of Benjamin, well, nation probably isn't the word I should use, but you know what I'm saying, the tribe, the tribe of Benjamin. Because can you imagine the kind of border wars that would be going on mm -hmm. if you've got two great, powerful tribes right next to each other? So what a smart move to put Benjamin in the middle there, uh, because then, well, we're not fighting with Judah, we're not fighting with Ephraim. Uh, we got our brother Benjamin in there. Well, okay, that's his territory. Uh, and, and the other thing that, that I read anyway, whether it's true or not, I hope it's true, uh, is that this is a very small territory compared to, say, uh, Judah and, and, and Ephraim, and yet it's a really nice bit, bit of land. It's a very rich portion of land. And so there you can see, uh, again, the God keeping everything in balance, keeping two tribes apart so they're not constantly fighting over their land, uh, and yet at the same time giving a smaller tribe, the small one, the little one, uh, giving them great blessings too. So anyway, th those were some of the things I read in the commentaries. I thought, well, that that's helpful to see. Yeah. You know, and you mentioned sort of the interfighting of the tribes, which I, I think, and I've mentioned this before on the show, but some people forget that while this is a, a united in terms of being the people of Israel, it would be almost like in sometimes the states during the War of Northern Aggression, oh, yeah. right? We or the Civil War, as some people call it, uh, <laughs> where where people are, you know, they we're kind of fighting each other, and sometimes they had inner, you know, civil wars amongst themselves. And so, what you bring up is very important. And and let's face it, this is probably the foundation of the civil war that will happen, that right. will divide Judah uh, from Israel. Uh, that, that it goes all the way back to here, and, and God's just trying to do the best he can to keep that from happening. But again, God realizes he's working with sinners, and, and therefore no matter what you do, that sinfulness is going to show itself, which is exactly why God was not concerned about this physical land and territory. He knew how this was all going to work out, and he knew that even 2,000 years later, we're still going to be fighting over this stuff which is why he gave us Jesus and a totally different kind of inheritance where there will be true Shiloh, right? Where there'll be true rest, be no more fighting. Uh, we'll finally have that peace that he's promised us, but not here, okay? Not right. now, uh, but it is coming. The new heavens and the new earth is what we're looking forward yeah. to. You know, we started this program by talking about how they've been given the land, but there's work to be done. There's still probably some skirmishes they're going to have to handle. They're certainly rebuilding, and, of course, the surveying is one of the first things they need to do. But we talked about how, you know, we've been given free faith. Uh, our forgiveness is free. It's all because of Jesus, and we're so grateful for that. But we have work to do in this life, not to earn our salvation, but, of course, to, uh, to help our neighbor. And that while... We want to rest forever. We come to worship and we say, all right, we're resting in the Lord. I don't want to get back to work. Um, I think it's important for people to know 
that in the new heavens and the new earth is not a bunch of laying around either. I mean, it's it's Eden restored. It's God putting us back in charge of the creation. It's, it's of course, we'll be perfected and, and we'll be confirmed in our righteousness. There'll be no falling away, but our eternity is eternity is not about floating in the clouds playing harps. It is about being on a concrete earth and creation just like we are now, but in the presence of God and in perfection eternally. So, yeah, there's still going to even be work to do in heaven. You know, <laughs> no rest for the weary, but of course we'll rejoice in the work because that's what God created us to do. And so the difference will be there'll be no thorns and thistles. There'll right. be no sweat of the brow. There certainly will be no return to the dust. Yeah, perhaps uh, work um, isn't the right word, but this de- <laughs> there'll definitely be an enjoying of creation that doesn't mean just laying around. Well, and, and as a retired guy, see, I, I, know, I know what that is. If, if I didn't have anything to do, if I didn't have this show to do with you, Pastor Boo, if I didn't have the, the, the uh, uh, preaching that I've been doing, if I didn't have the, 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 the family needs around me to help and care and to, and to enjoy being with uh, the, the, the children and the grandchildren, there would be no joy. I, I wouldn't enjoy having nothing to do. Honestly, those people who are sick and who can't do anything, they'll tell you, this is not a good thing. You don't want to be there. Uh, and, and like you said, we won't be there in heaven either. There'll be plenty for us to do in heaven. But then again, all the things that do make work a burden, those things right. will all be gone. It'll just be a joy. Yes, absolutely. So I tell you what, we're at the end of our show, believe it or not. So we are going to have to say goodbye. But folks at home, I'd like to thank my guest, the Reverend John Lekomsky, Pastor Emeritus, co-host of Wrestling with the Basics on KFUO Radio. Catch him and Matt Youngblood on, what is it, Saturdays at 1030. Isn't that right, brother? Uh, Saturdays at at, uh, 9. Oh, no. My goodness, (laughs) 9 o'clock. I'm sorry, 9 o'clock. But But, but you know what? But anytime on the podcast, so... I was going to say, you can listen to it at 1030 on the podcast if you really yep. want. But no, catch them live if you can. If not, check them out on uh, KFUO's radio app. But other than that, we got to go. So thank you, Pastor, for being on thank the show. Thank you, Phil. Folks, tomorrow we move into Chapter 19, right? The rigorous surveying is done. The moment of truth has arrived, well, already for Benjamin. But now, one by one, the lots are drawn to reveal the designated territories for the rest of the tribes. And we'll be doing that for a few chapters. Join us for that and uh, more. So until then, may God's peace and blessings be with you all. As we pray, Father, keep us in thy strong word.